is not. Well, you're more than welcome. The Dutch ambassador. I think of him often. I told you he's not going to be there this time. Is he? Oh, no, no, no. That was an official state dinner. This one's going to be quite interesting. Yeah, you are, you see. Who is it for? Well, it's for the uh, hard currency countries. There'll be a number of uh, speakers who will, uh, well, speak. On hard currency? Yes. The Dutch ambassador is growing on me. Well, it's not as bad as it sounds. I go no place where they don't speak Dutch. Alfred, it might be better if I stayed behind with Anna. She's acting so gay, I know she's depressed. She's not! <laughs> The door was open. Oh, hello, Philip. <laughs> Darling, I want you to meet Mr. Philip Adams. This is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? And my sister-in-law, Miss Anna Kalman. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Miss Kalman is no stranger to me. I've seen you often on the stage. I'm a fervent admirer. Why, thank you, kind sir. You know, I once stayed over an extra day in Liverpool because you were billed to appear and then the performance was cancelled. I'm sorry. It turned out to be a fortunate delay. I made some money out of it. I'm glad. I would have gladly traded the money for the performance. Would you care to see the performance now? I'll play all the parts. How much money was it? Well, I asked Philip to come up here and change his clothes. He's in from Paris, just for the dinner. I had no idea you'd be back. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I could go to a hotel. Oh, you're more than welcome. That's rather an imposition. I owe you something for Liverpool. And where is Mrs. Adams going to dress? There is no Mrs. Adams. Oh, well. Now do we have to go to this silly old dinner? The speaker will bore us and they won't miss us. Well, they'd miss him, my dear. He's the speaker. This happens to me all the time. I once asked a butler at the French embassy if he cared to waltz. He waltzed divinely. Well, you're right about the speech being dull. I've heard it. Well, we can go on to some other place afterward. It's the only hope for the evening. What do you say, Anna? Oh, I couldn't go. Why not? Well, for one thing, I, I'm not dressed. Well, neither are they. We'll race them. Why well, couldn't possibly be on time? Well, it doesn't matter if we are late. We've got the man with the speech. They can't start without him. Oh, she needs coaxing. You coax her. I'm an extra man. You'd make the dinner come out even. How many people are going to be there? 600. Yes. Yeah. 599 people in a room does look untidy. You see, that's all I wanted. An intelligent reason. You change in there. Last one dressed this last. Whitehall, double O, double one. Who in heaven's name is that? Stop breathing so hard. Oh, I didn't know it showed. Well, who is he? What is he? And speak slowly. He's a very bright gentleman we are hoping will accept a job in NATO. We're not having much luck. Hello, Hello Harris. Yes. This is Mr. Munson. Yes, Mr. Munson. One more for our table. Yes, Here's a place card for Miss Anna Kalman. Yes, uh, next to Mr. Philip Adams. Well, what about this, Mr. Adams? What do you want to know? Everything. And I mean everything. 
Well, I don't think he's romantically attached, which is what you're hinting. I'm not hinting, I'm asking. How do you know he's not attached? Well, we've had dinner together. He's been alone. So are you. Presumably, that proves nothing. That's right. <laughs> well, I don't know what he does after he leaves me. I'll follow him next time. Because he hasn't any money. You'll notice we're giving this dinner about money. He's the speaker. He must have some connection with it. There must be something the matter with his health. Hardly. He beat the squash champion at my club last weekend. You've got to be pretty healthy to do that. There must be a catch in it somewhere. There must be. He couldn't have escaped this long. Well, we're anxious to get him into NATO. There aren't many like him available as public servants. I'm not interested in the public. So you see, we find ourselves, I think I'm permitted to say, in a small dilemma. We have spiraling inflation on one hand and contracting credit on the other. But even that is no real cause for alarm, since we are actually the purchasing agent and consumer at the same time. I therefore suggest that we let the ratio of block currency equal the long-term commitments of the participating NATO countries. I'm He's sure as bad as the Dutch ambassador. I can't understand Obviously, one word. Tariff considerations would no longer be affected by internal devaluations, nor, and I can't emphasize this too strongly, would any single currency be obliged to look to another for its health and stability. I submit this is only fair. Be back. My, it's later than I thought. But you have time for a drink. Certainly we have. It's early. I'm afraid we haven't time for that drink. I have an early appointment tomorrow, and uh, Philip here is meeting half the French cabinet at 10 o'clock in the morning. He's sleeping on the boat train. Thank you. I'll drop you at the station. It must be out of your way. I can take a cab. It's only a few minutes. No trouble at all. Want to change here? No, no, I can change on the train. Thanks. Oh, isn't that awful? What's awful? Stop playing games. Don't tell me you don't like this one. Well, he talks and everything. Mm-hmm. He's all right. He's interesting. Interesting? <gasps> All these years married, and never once. And now I have a confession to make. At dinner, I thought he was pressing his knee against mine. He turned out to be a table leg. I was disappointed. You're a big talker. Ah, uh, 